Chapter 7 And it came to pass in the days of Ahaz, the son of Jotham, the son of Uzziah, king of Judah, that Rezin, the king of Syria, and Pekah, the son of Remaliah, king of Israel, went up toward Jerusalem to war against it, but could not prevail against it. And it was told the house of David, saying, Syria is confederate with Ephraim. And his heart was moved, and the heart of his people, as the trees of the wood are moved with the wind. Then said the Lord unto Isaiah, Go forth now to meet Ahaz, thou and Shear Jashub, thy son, at the end of the conduit of the upper pool in the highway of the fuller's field, and say unto him, Take heed, and be quiet, fear not, neither be faint-hearted for the two tails of these smoking firebrands, for the fierce anger of Rezin of Syria and the son of the son of Remaliah, because Syria, Ephraim, and the son of Remaliah have taken evil counsel against thee, saying, let us go up against Judah and vex it, and let us make a breach therein for us, and set a king in the midst of it, even the son of Tabiel. Thus saith the Lord God, It shall not stand, neither shall it come to pass. For the head of Syria is Damascus, and the head of Damascus is Rezin, and within threescore and five years shall Ephraim be broken, that it be not a people. And the head of Ephraim is Samaria, and the head of Samaria is Remaliah's son, if ye will not believe, surely ye shall not be established. Moreover, the Lord spake again unto Ahaz, saying, Ask thee a sign of the Lord thy God. Ask it either in the depth or the height above. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, neither will I tempt the Lord. And he said, Hear ye now, O house of David, is it a small thing for you to weary men? But will ye weary my God also? Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Butter and honey shall he eat, that he may know to refuse the evil and choose the good. For before the child shall know to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land that thou abhorrest shall be forsaken of both her kings. The Lord shall bring upon thee and upon thy people and upon thy father's house days that have not come from the day that Ephraim departed from Judah, even the king of Assyria. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall hiss for the fly that is in the uttermost parts, part of the rivers of Egypt, and for the bee that is in the land of Assyria. And they shall come and shall rest all of them in the desolate valleys, and in the holes and in the rocks, and upon all thorns, and upon all bushes. And that same day shall the Lord shave with a razor that is hired, namely by them beyond the river, by the king of Assyria, the head and the hair of the feet, and it shall also consume the beard. And it shall come to pass in that day that a man shall nourish a young cow and two sheep. And it shall come to pass for the abundance of milk that they shall give, he shall eat butter, for butter and honey shall every one eat that is left in the land. And it shall come to pass in that day that every place shall be where there were a thousand vines, at a thousand silverlings it shall even be for briars and thorns. With arrows and with bows shall men come thither, because all the land shall become briars and thorns. And on all hills that shall be digged with the mattock, there shall not come thither the fear of briars and thorns, but it shall be for the sending forth of oxen and for the treading of lesser cattle. Here we have Isaiah talking to the third of the kings of Israel, of, sorry, of Judah, that he has been called to see. This one happens to be King Ahaz, who is the son of King Jotham, who is the son of King Uzziah. And he's told to go meet him at a certain spot and give him a warning. And the warning he's told to give him is, don't have an alliance with the people of, with the country of Syria, and don't have an alliance with the country, northern Israel, the northern part of Israel, uh, as Ephraim, because the political alliance would lead to war, which would lead to the destruction of the country. You know, he was, he met Ahaz, the king, at a particular spot, gave him the warning, and then challenged him, and said, "If you don't believe me, you can have a confirming signal, a confirming sign from the Lord to know that it's true." And Ahaz. Uh, <laughs> didn't ask for the sign. And the reason wasn't that he didn't want to ask God for a sign. He just didn't want to have to overcome 
and make the, the uh, arrangement, which he eventually did make, in spite of having the sign. So the sign was more inconvenient for him because it meant he would have had to ignore it. Um, we have here Sheer Jashub, who is the son of Isaiah, one of the sons of Isaiah, and his name means, is actually a prophetic name. It means, and the remnant shall return. And uh, the, I can't remember what, he had at least one more son, and I can't remember exactly what his name was. He calls these, these uh, in verse 4, Isaiah calls Rezin and, and the son of Remaliah, these calls them smoking firebrands. And in those days, and pe as people used torches, a firebrand would have been a piece of a branch, usually that had some sort of pitch or resin on it that was set up to burn as a torch. But when the resin was burnt out or the you know the pitch was was gone this thing would smolder but it was completely useless there was no heat there was no fire it, it didn't didn't give any light it was essentially useless and so Isaiah was letting Ahaz know that these two people were even though they had armies were essentially useless it would be of no benefit as allies I'd like to spend the last couple of minutes here defending something against the shame of the world and that is the tendency of many modern churches to pretend that Jesus was not the result of a virgin birth, that would like to pretend that he wasn't resurrected. There are churches that don't even believe he was crucified. And the problem starts here in Isaiah, where without any authorization whatsoever, many churches change the word virgin to young woman. Now, Isaiah is extremely specific in his choice of words. Virgin. This woman has never had any kind of intimate relationship with any man, period, at all, ever. The thing that makes the possibility of having a son is that genetically, women only contribute female genetic material to the baby. Which would mean that if a woman started to produce a baby without any intimate relationship with a man, the only children she could have would be female. The male component, whether it is a male or female child, is determined by the male's genetic contribution. If there is no male genetic contribution, all you are going to get is females. That's it. Doesn't happen any other way. Now, if you look in, in your scripture that you are reading, and it says young woman, you know something about the church that made the book that you are reading. And that is that without authorization from God, they have changed the meaning and that they do not believe that Jesus Christ was born of a virgin, that he was, in fact, the Son of God, and that, in fact, they may not even believe he either was crucified, as some churches don't, or that he was resurrected, or that he was even divine at all. This is the first place where this sort of shows up. It happens many other times, but this is the first place it shows up. In Matthew chapter 1, it says, His name shall be Emmanuel, which being translated means God with us. And that's who it was. And he was born of a virgin named Mary.